Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us for the, the FOLA sign off day two. Here we are rounding up. Uh, my name is Adrian Wong. I'm artistic director of Spiderweb Show Performance. We are the producers of FOLDA, the Festival of Live Digital Art. Uh, I am a 40-ish woman uh, wearing a black t-shirt. I have mixed uh, Chinese and French Canadian descent. I've got dark black hair and uh, it's kind of short right now. And I want to introduce the, my co-curators on my left, I think, over here, Mike. Do you want to introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Michael Wheeler. I'm also a co-curator of the festival. And uh, I'm a tall guy. I uh, don't have that much hair. Uh, I'm in my mid-40s, uh, early 40s, let's call it. And uh, I'm wearing a gray sweatshirt and a blue t-shirt and a baseball cap today. Sarah. Thank you. And to hey, everyone. Right. Hey everyone, um, I'm Sarah Garten Stanley and I'm the uh, executive producer for Spiderweb Show Performance and co curator for Folda. Um, I'm in my 50s and I have a gray cap on, uh, Tucon, which I often do. Uh, this is given to me by um, a wonderful person in Winnipeg. Um, and I am wearing about six layers uh, because I got very cold earlier. And um, I am. Uh, I was born in Montreal, um, and uh, I'm white, and I have American and British and French um, uh, lineage. Yeah, that's me. Thank you, Sarah. And I guess we should also mention where we all are right now. I'm uh, here in Banff, Alberta. The sun is just setting, so we're getting what's called the Alpen glow when the sun is down on the mountains on the west, but the light is still hitting the tops of the mountains on the east. And where are you two? Um, uh, I'm in Kairakwe, in Kingston. I'm in the same place, but in a different room. <laughs> and so how, this Sarah, a, talk about how it is that we're here yeah. together. In this this same is a great segue. First of all, we're having fun. Um, uh, it's been a really long day with a lot of uh, incredible things in it. And um, we have been placed in a CDN studio box uh, with some really nice forced perspective behind us. But the three of us are in different locations. And uh, this is um, so that we can share with you uh, something that uh, we've developed at Spiderweb Show um, over the last number of years. Um, something that I created with Joel Adria. Joel Adria is a technologist and designer. Um, and he had the uh, the know-how and the capacity to be able to take this idea that we both were thinking about and put it into action. And so it's a tool that we hope uh, can do a bunch of things, but we are also realizing it's not a bad way for three people to feel like they're together in the same space. Although Adrian is looking behind my head right now, um, but that's okay because I have some, oh yeah, yeah. But it is, I mean, there's some really great things that you can do with it and um, and you can give a sense that you are sharing a collective space for a conversation or for whatever. So welcome to CDN Studio um, and to the end of our evening, our second evening at the Folder Festival. And my goodness, what a day it's been. Today has been a deep dive into the Green Rooms, which is a, a joint initiative between the NAC, the National Theatre School, Canada Council, uh, looking at, uh, and it's the third of, of three study cycles that, that you've been working on, Sarah, at NAC, looking at the, the carbon footprint of Canadian performance and, and just climate change and how that affects us as makers, how makers affect climate change. And, and I think through today, like the, the thing I come away with even more than yesterday is the intertwinedness of all of those things, all of those things. Um, we started the morning talking about grief, which was quite, uh, I don't know, it was really grounding to just like be able to sit in feeling sad about the state of the world and for that to be okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say it, it has been a really, um, a really big day and putting together uh, events like this and working over these couple of years in particular with Chantal Bilodeau, the co-curator for the Green Rooms, um, and imagining it in, in one way, which was pre-COVID, 
and then imagining it in another way, which was um, pre this recent um, upsurge of protest and movement around Black Lives Matter and trying to understand how to come to these questions. Um, one of the greatest gifts of the cycles is that uh, they've, they've given me the opportunity to really dig into some of these massive questions that impact how we make work and to think about what the influences are that um, allow some people to make it, other people not to, and to ask the relevant questions about it. And th this, this last cycle, which is the final cycle, um, uh, we felt was asking the biggest question. And the curious thing is that when you get to the, what you think is the biggest question, you realize that it's connected to all the other questions. Um, and so, yeah, I, to echo what you said, Adrian, the, the intertwinedness, uh, the nesting together of um, the intersections um, are, are really, um, they're so beautifully tangled together and so treacherously tangled uh, or ensnared in one another. Um, so it's been a really big day of, uh, I think, learning and sharing and uh, just incredible speakers. And the dance party that we just came off of with uh, Cyrus Marcus Ware, and uh, the, he's such an incredible art maker and the expression of uh, his, his moment and where he is in his own life and his work and his activism, and that he was able to share that in such a beautiful and phenomenal kind of dance moment. Um, yeah, it was, a, it was a great way to spend the last hour of this day. Absolutely. Cool. Um, well, I think, Michael, you we, had, oh. yeah, I think we're going to the same place, which is, uh, I, I have a couple of tweets that I selected that are from today's uh, conversations I thought might be somewhere we could pick up off of. So uh, the first one um, is, is a quoting from Donna Michelle St. Bernard. Uh, uh, and one point in her conversation about the future, she said, uh, the future is finding out what we never needed, what we gave up but don't need to get back. I thought I really needed lattes. And um, I selected that because I thought it was a great point. Like, you know, um, so much of our lives have been upended by the by all of the social um, changes that COVID and, and the analysis of our own lives in the context of the Black Lives Matter protests. And it's making us kind of upend our assumptions about just like what everyday life is like. And, and I thought that lattes were actually just like a really good, simple, small example of like, oh yeah, I thought I needed a latte. Then they shut down all the cafes. I didn't have lattes. I, I'm, I'm still okay. And, and just the extrapolation of that was really interesting. Uh, that makes me think it's hard. of strawberries too. Because <laughs> when I when I was growing up, we would get strawberries once a year, and they usually weren't sweet. And my mom had this thing where you would dip the strawberry in sour cream and then in brown sugar, and that's how we ate strawberries because they were not really that great. And then at some point when I was in university, like strawberries were always available. And to me, that's really the symbolism of like, like the consu like the, like we just need to have everything when we want it now. And and uh, yeah, I did I did have a latte today, but I really really enjoyed it, <laughs> which is different. Do you know what I mean? Like it wasn't. It wasn't something that I do every day anymore. It's something I do once a month now. So I don't need it, but it's like uh, I recognized the late, like all of the things that went into making this thing. And then I also thought, what? I'm paying what this for what? Like what? I, no, I don't. So anyhow, it's um, I'm gonna pass this. You over. know, it it makes thank you. It makes me think about uh, you know this digital festival um and how it was conceived as a place that existed between that which was in the real world and that which was um eventually online we weren't only thinking about online and how we needed it to go online because circumstances made it impossible for us to gather and 
I think many of us feel what we need and miss about gathering at the same time, recognizing the things that we may not need that we thought we needed with respect to gathering. And so I think there's been some real uh, opening, um, yeah, some real mind expansion for me about that question, you know, uh, in particular tra traveling, you know, um, it's a really big one. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's a good kind of converse point. And also the pandemic in particular has made us realize what else we do need that we don't, we don't have right now as well. So some, some good reestablishing of priorities and, and I felt like Alana was trying to drive at that a bit today in, in notes from the future in terms of like, is this a moment? Is there something in this moment? And, and I'm not sure that her, the, you know, that the collaborators necessarily saw the same hope that Alana saw, but, but certainly mm, we're all learning about ourselves in new ways. And that maybe that's um, fuel for, for change. And, and, and if we harness it, positive change. Um, I'm going to pull up the other tweet that I selected. Uh, so the other one is is a, is a quote from from Ravi Jain, um, who was in a really powerful conversation with you earlier today, Sarah. Um, and, and at one point, you know, he brought up defund the police, and you know, we had defund the police as a conversation. We might talk about it at one point in these four days, but Ravi really kind of upped the stakes in that I, idea by by proposing, what if we defunded major white and art institutions? What if instead of pulling down statues, we pulled down harmful organizations? And um, I, I enjoyed the way that that challenged me. You know, uh, I'm a pretty easy target for supporting defund the police. I, I made a piece of theater about the G20 protests and, and police brutality, and I, I can I can get behind that idea super easily. Um, but but Ravi's proposition that that if we're going to apply this to society and not just make this a cop problem uh, made me really rethink about why why are we not also talking about defunding other institutions? I understand that the police are at the front of black people's demands in, in, in the Black Lives Matter movement and hopefully all of our demands in society. Like that, that is obvious to me why police will be on top, but I can see how that critique could be applied to our other institutions. And, and that was an idea that hadn't really registered with me till today. Yeah, what I liked about what he, I mean, what I found exciting about what he suggested, because it was, you know, such a uh, a great proposal. It's like how, because my my mind went immediately to giving power back to certain decision makers, and he took it away again and said, no, it can actually happen with the people who have the resources as opposed to it having to be, you know, I immediately went to the Canada Council or to Heritage or to, you know, governmentalizing it. And he brought it back to say, well, what if, you know, we actually had a conversation, like what if, uh, I think the example was, you know, Canadian stage gave their money to Native Earth, for example. Um, and I think it's a really, uh, obviously it's a, it's a, it's much closer to home in some respects to us in this conversation, but I also think it's a really great um, offer for a conversation. Yeah. You know, if just like, I'm just riffing here, but like, you know, the, <clears throat> the elements of the argument to defund the police are um, that the, the, the police cannot do everything, that the police have been given too much to do in our society. They're in charge of everything and that many, of the calls could be better served by people who are better at de-escalating and social workers. And so just like to shift that logic to arts production, like maybe major institutions can't be asked to serve fully society with like a monolithic institution. And, and it's, it's actually just about good public policy to have more specific um, service to the community. Like, I don't know, I see a really, um, strong through intellectual argument as it, as it as it shifts over it makes me think though about the other thing Ravi was talking about about um all the conversations he's having right now or, or since covid um with other arts leaders who are you know coming from racialized backgrounds and that they're not talking about art and they're not talking about their seasons they're talking about activism and they're talking about systems change so 
so when you talk about like defunding large institutions and shifting that money it makes me think of like finally paying some people for doing that labor for for thinking about systems change for trying to work towards uh progressive change or just like anti-racism anti-oppression work that is off the side of the desk so many times and um you know how many artists have we talked to we're like oh that political stuff that's not my that's not my uh thing i just make art and and how uh <laughs> how that how nice that would be you know to to not have to think about um oh well oh, so many things so many things that uh donna michelle was talking about um that's what it makes me think of is like where is the work going it's and the way that um uh when they talk when COVID shut everything down we said the economy is broken it's like it's not stopped nothing has stopped like if anything i'm working harder at my household than i ever was it's just that the labor that i perform is not counted towards the economy uh, mm -hmm. so it's it brings me back to tom green's presentation when he was talking about can't what we start to count what matters you know, rather like really what matters is the latte is nice, but it's not the latte. It's not the strawberries. I can do without them. Well, I think it's we're done. Time. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, should we wrap this up then? And I'll sign us we off. Should. I want to. But... Oh, before? Yeah. Like, can yeah. we say something like about tomorrow? because there's yeah. lots of great things tomorrow. Yeah. Do it. So, yeah, okay. So, um, I think tomorrow I, we're starting at 2.30 on the live stream, 2.30 to 3. It's the closing act for the green rooms. Um, and uh, really looking forward to it. It will be some kind of a co-creation that's going to speak to um, these last couple of days in the green rooms. And, um, and then we head out into a really exciting evening of, of production performance uh, with Haven um, uh, and at 7:30, and over to you, Adrian, to keep to keep going on the programming for tomorrow. And and, and all of these times, by the way, are in Eastern Daylight Time. So Haven's at 7:30 Eastern Daylight Time. We have May I Take Your Arm at 9 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, and then at 10:30. Uh, a real treat. Uh, it's um, This World Made Itself, which is Miwa Matrayek. Anybody who's tuned in on, it's funny, tuned in on uh, last night and saw Myth and Infrastructure, this is Miwa's second show. And then on Saturday night, we'll show her um, most recent show, uh, Infinitely Yours. But tomorrow night at 10.30 uh, Eastern Daylight Time, you'll check out her magical work. So yeah, and before else? that, Alex Balmer. Yeah, Alex Balmer in May yeah. I Take Your Arm. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Anything else I'm forgetting? It's possible. It's very possible. It's late. It's been a long day. I'm looking at my lamp and my water bottle. I know, it's um, really. <laughs> <laughs> being in the middle is really, I'm a middle child. I'm, it's all good. Thank you all um, who have stayed with us this long for joining us. And we'll see you tomorrow. This is uh, Sarah, Adrian, and Michael signing off. Good night. <laughs>